I'm Callie with Ag Aviation Adventures and today we're down in Yuma, Arizona with Morris Ag Air. We have with us Ben Ramos and he is going to talk to us all about night operations here in Yuma. If you thought what we do in North Dakota is crazy, wait till you see what these guys are doing down here. It is a completely different world. So for this video, forget anything we've ever told you about spraying. We're showing you something different. First things first, we're so grateful for this opportunity to come down here and check this out. Tell us a little bit about Morris Ag Air and the history of the company that you work for here in the Yuma Valley. Sure can. So we've uh, we've been in business for 19 years now. I've been working here for five years uh, to as a um, ground crew and this will be my third season flying. A little bit about Morris Ag Air. You all run fixed wing airplanes, helicopters, and now some drones, is that correct? Yeah. So we have the full gamut of aerial application down here. Can you tell us some of the different crops that are grown and some of the crops you all are spraying here? Sure, so from the months of November through April, we are the lettuce capital of the nation. So we have uh, leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce, head lettuce, all kinds of lettuce. Uh, we also have spinach, arugula, celery, parsley, we have cabbage, kale, cauliflower, broccoli, mustard greens, turnip greens, collards, just dozens of varieties of crops. Something that's really important to differentiate down here from Midwest agriculture is a lot of the produce that is grown in these fields is harvested in the fields, packaged in the fields by hand, and then sent to where it needs to be sent to. Let's move over to the airplane here behind us and just give us a little bit of a background of what you're flying here. So this is not much different than what you guys fly up in North Dakota. It's uh, it's still an S2R, that's Thrush S2R. It's uh, a little smaller on the hopper size. It's a 400 gallon hopper. Uh, and the reason for that is because this airplane just fits in this region of the Yuma Valley. Okay. Um, the field sizes just fit this airplane. Uh, it does have a Pratt & Whitney Dash 34 on the nose, so that's a little bit different. And when we when we first rolled in yesterday, Tyson was saying like they're, they've got to have all this equipment to be able to do the night spraying and it's, it must be so sophisticated. And, and honestly, you just have a bunch of lights <laughs> and that's what you're using right. out there. So can you show us the lights on the airplane that sure. are what you use to be able to see at night? Sure. So we have a total of seven lights. We have two obstacle lights, three work lights, and then two turn lights on either side of the wings. My favorite part of the night, I think, was when you guys were on the load pad and you got loaded, you were ready to take off and then you click those lights on and it's just like, it lights up the world and then you take off right away. Walk us through how you're using these lights in the field. So when I'm spraying, I'm running all, I'm running all of my lights on all the time, except for the turn lights. Those are on a Chinaman's hat on the uh, stick. Okay. And those I only use them in the turns to see things that I really need to see. Down in the field. Down in the field. It's more of a spotlight feature okay. on the wingtip that I can use. Okay. The reason I don't have all LED lights, if you can see those are lamps and these are LEDs, is if we ran all LEDs, we'd kind of be shooting ourselves in the foot sometimes because the visibility around here uh, gets bad. And if you had all LED lights on these airplanes, it would be a complete whiteout situation Okay. almost all the time and it'd be real bad. So that's why we run the older style B-17 lamps. Landing okay. lights is what they are. And so, the main difference between Tyson's airplane and this airplane, basically the lights, and, and that's it. it. You, Everything else is the same. And you have, I guess your instruments are all lit in the cockpit with a red light. Yeah. But other than that, it's pretty simple. And that is something that we were absolutely just blown away by because we figured there has to be something more, but it's really just lighting. But there's also another key aspect to something that you guys do down here that we don't do, and that's having a spotter on the ground. So can you tell us a little bit about your spotter and the importance of what they're doing and how they're helping you stay safe and, and stay successful out there? Absolutely. So uh, a spotter is, is key to succeeding out here. They are our first set of eyes on a field. They're extremely important. The flying around here is super technical and they really are the tip of the spear when it comes to flying ag at night out here. So they go out in a pickup okay. with their set of maps in order the way we're going to do them for the night and they go out and check the fields and they'll radio it in. They're checking for people, obstacles. Uh, Cross-contamination is a big one around here with all the varieties that we have. 
So they are all pretty much trained to watch for what we watch for in the airplanes, you know. Right. But they are mainly there for our safety. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about why you're out there at night. We have the fact that there are hundreds of people out working in the fields during the day and at night. What are some other reasons why you guys go out there at night? So I feel like I should give you some history on that. So uh, night flying in the Yuma Valley started back when cotton was king around here. So cotton is a summer crop, so it's hot in Yuma. It's 120 degrees and 100 degrees at night. Uh, so back in the days, we didn't have uh, turbines. And we flew older radial engine airplanes that ran hot. And the only time that we could run them was at night. Right. So somebody decided to strap lights on an airplane and try it, and we've been doing it ever since. And it, uh, it's just morphed into what it is today. It fits our program really well because now that we've jumped from cotton into produce, there's crews out during the day. There's transplant crews, harvest crews, irrigation crews, pipe crews, any all types of crews. They all go home in the evenings, and it just works out best for us to do that. And another thing too is. Uh, Bloom is a big thing around here in certain times of year, in certain crops, certain uh, certain seed crops, and we also have uh, bees to protect around here. Right. You guys have been doing this a long time, and we talked about the reasons why you're doing it at night, but in my opinion, it seems like there are some disadvantages to going out there at night. Can you talk a little bit about what those disadvantages may be? Well, the fact that the human body uh, naturally uh, has to adapt to nighttime operations. You know, right. uh, it's not natural for somebody to go out and work all night if they have to. The body doesn't take well to it. It takes some time to get used to. Uh, other, obviously, it's dark. You can't see a lot of things out there. The fact and, that there are obstacles out yeah. there that you can't see very well. Yeah. If you don't know the telltale signs of something being out there or something to tell you that there's something there that you should be looking for then it becomes very difficult. Right. I don't know, maybe I'm biased. I feel like this is this industry is, is not a safe one to be in. And I, I do feel like there's added risks at night. Is that is that true? Does Do you feel that there are added risks spraying out there at night? Absolutely. Just for your safety alone? Yeah, yeah absolutely, yes. Tell us about your, your typical schedule in a day. So usually we'll show up around the office around two, three o'clock in the afternoon, and we will see what kind of work we have. Paperwork comes in the email, they print us out our work orders. Around five o'clock, we start to give paperwork out, sort chemicals, send spotters out to the fields, do all of that stuff. And typically flying around six, 6.30 is when we're starting up and going out and flying. As far as the schedule, there is none. So we're all very disciplined to train our bodies to get the rest that we need. So if we go out and spray all night, uh, we'll get a good night's rest. It might not be at night, but we'll get a good night's rest. So you may get here at two, three in the afternoon, do the logistics, start flying at six, and you could fly until the sun comes up in the morning. Is that correct? Potentially, yeah. On a busy night? On a busy night, yes. So that's something that's really hard for us to wrap our heads around is it's it's the same, but it's different because it's at night. And, and then you have the added stress on the body and the sleep and the home life and all of the things that come with a night shift, basically. Right. And you just have to work and adapt to it and make the best of it and make sure that you're healthy and rested and most importantly make sure that you're safe right that's the most important thing yeah like i said from november to april uh, produce is king and uh, the rest of the year is not nonchalant but we do have work the rest right. of the year 365 days a year what's the average field size down here i i know it's a much smaller scale for the vegetable production but on average what would you say is a good field size for you uh, average field size around here gross acres is about uh, about 40 acres or so um, but they get a lot smaller than that 20 acres 10 acres uh, here and there uh, occasionally we get the bigger ones which are 80 acres okay but uh, i would say average field size around here is around 40 gross acres yeah. That's a pretty small field, but not only is, is that a small field, what gallons per acre are you running on most of these crops? So it depends on the time of the season. Uh, usually we'll start off around the five and seven range when stuff is small coming out of the ground. And once it starts to close up, uh, we'll do uh, north of 10 gallons to the acre, average 10 gallons, and then uh, the helicopter will fly 15, 20 gallon work. It was hard enough for us to wrap our heads around the average field size of 40 acres, but then to add on the 10 gallons per acre, our airplanes aren't even set up to do that. 
Yeah, so at the end of the day, what it comes down to is whether 5, 10, 15, or 20 gallon work is, uh, it just comes down to dollars per hour and just uh, you have to charge accordingly. Right. Well, we've touched on the basics of your night operations down here in Yuma. And if you all are anything like Tyson and I, yesterday when we started taking all of this in, we just had so many more questions once we were here witnessing all of this. So we're going to do a separate frequently asked questions about night operations. That's going to be a completely separate video. We'll link it below. So be sure to check that out if you now have more questions than you came here with. One question I really like to ask folks that we have the opportunity to stand here with is if you could tell the general public anything about agriculture, what would that be? You know, night flying, it's not reckless. It, it is dangerous, but we do our best to make it as safe as possible. And we've spent years perfecting techniques and finding new ways to make things safer. And we will continue to do that forever. Another thing I'd like to add too is uh, just, uh, just eat your veggies, because Yuma works really, really hard to get a head of lettuce to, uh, to a dining table in New York. I mean, we, it, takes, it takes all of us to make it happen, from the irrigators to the ag pilots to the people cutting the lettuce to the growers to, it just, it's a big science and it takes a lot to put a head of lettuce on someone's dining table. It truly is really incredible, and there's so many people working hard to put food on your table. Tyson and I would like to extend a huge thank you to Ben Ramos for inviting us here, Miles Morris for accommodating us here at the operation. The entire crew at Morris Ag Air has been incredible and we just have felt so welcomed and it's been amazing to, to be able to come here and get our hands dirty and see what you guys are doing down here. Thank you for coming, it was good having you guys. If you have any questions, which I'm sure you do, leave them in the comment section below. We'll get back to you. Also be sure to check out the Frequently Asked Questions video and we're gonna show you one of the helicopters. So be sure to check out that video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks again, Ben, we really appreciate it. With that, Tyson always says, fly low, fly fast. I think here it's probably appropriate to just say, keep your lights on.